We need to stand on God's word and believe Jesus. I was up in the mountains. I may have said this here, but I'll say it again. I was up in the mountains, man, of, of, uh, of West Virginia, uh, preaching at a Jesus festival. Thousands of people all over that mountain. We had PTL and 700 club people there. They were taping this thing. And I began to minister the word of the Lord. I got excited. I couldn't help myself, you know. And boy, those poor cameras. Boy, I walk a lot, you know. They're doing this and doing that, you know, all kinds of things. They're saying, stand still. I said, I can't stand still. Got the Holy Ghost in my veins. Boy, I got to walk. Just follow me. Boy, they were running around with, with them cameras like this, you know. The Lord was ministering, touching people, falling down in the grass and all kinds of things. I was getting excited, man. I enjoy myself. I can't help it. I told them people up there on television, I said, get that beacon, get that, that camera right to my nose. I walked right up to it and I said, he's alive out there, people. I knew some of them said, oh God, that's another Jesus freak on the television. <laughs> Hallelujah. How I got so excited, old boy gave his heart to Jesus. I didn't know because there's thousands of people out there. I went to my tent table where they had all of the uh, tapes and records, and I was standing there, and here come this kid walk up to me, and he says, I want to tell you something. I don't know you, but, man, I got saved today. I met Jesus as my personal Savior. He said, I like you, man, because you get excited when you talk about the Lord. I said, well, praise the Lord. He looked at me and said, believe I will. Throw his hands up and start praising God right there. <laughs> Everybody in that tent said, my Lord, what's the matter with him? He's praising God. Everybody shot down. Everybody just got down and said, let's praise the Lord. This God's going to do it whether we like it or not. <laughs> Jesus is alive, people. The great proclamation has gone forth. And yet we sit back and don't tell nobody nothing. And you want ministries. And you want to do this for God. And there's people dying out there and nobody knows you're saved. They just look at you and say, you know, well, he's just another guy. Jesus wants us to minister and tell people that he's the resurrection and the life. That he's alive. The Bible says in Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That means everybody that see you ought to see the agape love of Jesus in your life. They're going to see faults in you because you're a man, you're a woman. But I tell people, look beyond my faults, man. I'm still a man. God's still doing some changing. But one day I'm predestinated to conform to the image of Jesus. I walk and I'm the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ, man. When Jesus see me, he said, that's my Cajun down there. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord likes me. If you don't believe me, you ask him. He'll tell you. He will. And I said, man, I made up my mind. When I go in this ministry, I'm going to tell everybody that he's alive. I'm going to let that great proclamation go forth and let people know that Jesus is alive and doing well. And when I walk in the hospital, instead of looking at him, I say, boy, you look bad, chat. I think you're going to die. I ain't saying that trash. I'm going to just preach the word of the Lord. Say, I come here to pray and lay the hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Boy, you see people getting their eyes get big. You know why? Because faith begins to rise when the word of the Lord is preached. Me and Jules went and prayed for a lady. And a Jules, when he first got saved, that boy was crazier than me. I mean, that boy was nuts, man. We were, I don't know. I know so, Carol was with me too. Carol, a bunch of, I believe. We went up there and prayed for that lady. had that hole in her throat. Was you with me, Carol? Oh, there was three of us. I don't know. Somebody else. Anyway, Jules was with me. Jules said, Jesse, we got to pray, man. We was in the elevator. Now, Jules get excited when he prays. So he said, let me read some of the word. He grabbed some of the word, and there's some people in that elevator. All of a sudden, Jules says, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And you know, Jules kind of act out the stuff. He think he weightlifting or something. He went, whoo, whoo, whoo. You ready? We're going to do it. Let's put the word of God. Boy, the mortal is going, good God. What's the matter with this guy, man? He just pumped, he said, I got to pump myself up with the word of the Lord. We walked in that place and the whole, the whole room was full. Ain't that nice? Two crazy preachers. One lawyer and another preacher. <laughs> he said, we come to pray. Everybody bow y'all heads. Everybody go, yeah, man. Yeah, it's that you say. Then tell the lady, we had to tell her that Jesus was alive and doing well. Right. See, when you pray for people, you gotta let you gotta produce the faith that's within your spirit. Amen. So they can bite on some of that. <laughs> As two of you touch together and touch God's throne, you see physical manifestations of healing. Amen. Jesus wants us to minister life, people. He's alive. How come everybody's so bored? How come everybody's worried about the economy? Or about budget cuts? Oh, how come am I sweating that so much? I care less. Jesus is going to take care of us. <laughs> when everybody ain't got no food, come to my house. I'm going to have a bunch. <laughs> so how do you know? Because Deuteronomy 28 is mine today. The Abraham covenant blessings for me here. 
I ain't no poor mouth in preaching. If you don't send me some money, I won't be able to preach next week. Isn't that kind of funny if you'd have heard Jesus when he preached to the 5,000 and said, all right now, we're going to take up as an offering. Now, if y'all don't give no money, we can't go to Capernaum next week. <laughs> that don't make no sense, does it? If y'all don't send me some money, I'm going off the air. Go off the air. Tired of hearing your lips flap anyway. That irritates me. And it's hurt a lot of people from coming to, coming to Jesus Christ. Because all they do is sucking people for money. Hallelujah. I, 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 just, I just love to get in one of those big meetings. About 5,000. I preached I preach 8,000. Turn around that pastor and say, the Lord said for you to feed these people. Feed them with what? Physical food. You see them pass out on the floor right there. Jesus said, feed them. That's what he said. He said, I can't do that. He said, greater works you can do. Has anybody raised anybody from the dead? Oh, Jules had me so nervous one time. He told me he was going to show vans, get some bodies, and bring them to my revival. <laughs> I said, that crazy, that crazy guy. You know, when a lawyer walks in there and says, I'm a lawyer, they're going to give him a body. <laughs> Ain't no telling what they're liable to do. <laughs> he's alive, people. And he's alive tonight to minister life to you. Jesus is alive and doing well. He is. He's alive and doing well. Hallelujah. Go into the world and preach the gospel to every living creature. Went to work for Shell Oil Company. I guess the best company I ever worked for in my life. They treated me nice. I worked hard for those people and they, they helped me. And they, they, they raised me up, you know, and they gave me nice jobs. I first went in there and I said, God, I ain't saying nothing about you because somebody will get mad. I said, now, Lord, I know you gave me this job at Shell. I didn't have to go out and kick pipe or nothing. I immediately went into a warehouse and then immediately went into an office job. And the Lord gave me favor. With Ken Butcher, what happens to be a uh, general manager of purchase and operation for One Shell Square of uh, the Southern EP region. The Lord gave me favor with those people. And I hadn't said that one word to them. The Lord began to deal with me. He said, I want you to tell them about me. Tell them that I'm alive. I said, I think they know you're alive, God. If you don't mind, why don't you just say it? Because, <laughs> I mean, you know, God, I got to work. It's eight hours a day. You know, I mean, he said, I got you the job, and I can get rid of it to you. I said, forget it. I'll see it. I'll see it. So I was sitting in about three of my bosses in there. And I just said, Lord said, praise me. I said, oh, God, <laughs> what are they going to do, man? He said, they ain't going to do nothing. They're going to look at you like you're funny. I said, they think I'm a nut now. God, they're going to know for sure that I'm crazy if I do that. He said, tell them that I'm alive. He said, one of their babies is sick. He's in a, she, she's in the hospital. They say she's got cancer in her legs. He said, I want you to go down there and pray for that kid. I said, oh, God. If you don't get healed, I'm going to get fired. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do, God? That's my boss, man. He said, I know who he is. Go ahead. So I was sitting there and I was re releasing some pipe to go out on a well for an offshore rig for Shell Rig 21. And I turned around and I said, boss. Jesus is alive. Oh, please do something, God. They looked at me and said, what's the matter? You crashed or something? I said, no, I ain't. That's the Lord spoke to me. They said, who? I didn't hear nothing. I said, you don't have the right kind of ears. I said, but you can meet Jesus as your personal Savior if you let him come into your life and bless you and touch you. I said, help me out, God, because I'm about to fall off this seat because they say anything. I don't know what I'm going to say. They said, you religious? I said, no, I ain't religious. Then how come you're talking about God? I said, I know Jesus. You don't have to be religious to know Jesus. I said, that's the problem. We've got too much religion today. Amen. we got too many people saying you got to do it this way. And you got to do it that way. I don't hear Jesus saying that. He just said, love me. And preach my word and heal the sick. Go out and tell people about me. I'll tell you what, born after a while, I'm beginning to witness pretty good in there, you know. And they all still like me. Isn't that the Lord? I just knew they wouldn't go like me. Well, old U.S. Steel decided to raise the prices of steel, man. We had to go do an inventory. We had to get everything out of stock, so we'd have to pay taxes on this extra stuff. So we had to work an overtime or work through our lunch hours. So the boss looked at me and said, why don't you go get some chicken? I said, okay. I got in my car and went down to Danny's Fried Chicken in Morgan City. I walked in. When I got in that car, the Lord spoke to my heart and said, start praising me. I said, well, that ain't bad. You know, you can praise God by yourself. Easy. Because there ain't nobody looking at you. You know, you don't get embarrassed. I got in that little toy of mine. I just began to praise the Lord. I said, well, I, you know, I said it very nonchalant. I said, well, thank you, Jesus. He said, that ain't too good. I said, I know it ain't, man. I got to do a lot of work when I get back. He said, praise me. So 
So I began to praise him. Boy, after a while, I began to feel the spirit in that car, man. And I was driving to Danny's fried chicken. And I've learned one thing since I got saved. I learned how to cry. See, when I was a man, I, you know, I didn't want my wife to see me cry because men don't cry. Men are macho. Ain't that a bunch of junk? But when I got saved, the Lord started using my tear wells, man. I started bawling. Now, I didn't go, uh, and all that kind of stuff, but I did cry. And I began to bawl and squall in that car. I figured I'd just let her out because nobody was in there with me except God. And I'd go on that Danny's front. I began to cry, man. And I said, Lord, you're so good. And the Lord began to let me realize just how much life was living in me. And I mean, I began to bawl and I'm driving down the road and people pass me and go, I guess his wife left him. <laughs> Must be something wrong. You know, most people think of the worst, you know. They never think of the goodness. They always think of the worst. Get a phone call at 2 o'clock in the morning. The first thing that comes to your mind, your mama died. Your daddy got in a car accident. Your kid or something like that. You know, something dumb. I begin to bawl and squall. Then it dawned on me I had to go into Danny fried chicken. Man, my eyes red looking like Dracula, man. And tears coming out of my eyes. So I walked in there and I said, I want y'all to give me three pieces of white meat and some meat. I can't help myself. They said, what's the matter, man? I said, I don't know, but Jesus is good. They went, oh, God, this boy has really got a dose of this stuff. You in one of them cults? Boy, you ever seen greasy chicken and tears mixed? It's tough. I couldn't help myself because the great proclamation was spoken to my spirit that Jesus was alive and looking at me. And I tell you what, I ordered all kind of dark meat, white meat, balling and squalling. Everybody, you know people come up to you and go, oh, it'll be all right. <laughs> Tap you on the shoulder. Boy, you say, Jesus. They go, oh, God. Let's get... Don't ever say that word. You can run people off fast. I'd ball in this wall and got my chicken and walking out of there. I said, God, my boss is in there and I don't want to see me, I don't want them to see me crying, Lord. I mean, they're gonna think it's the pressure of the job. I walked in there, couldn't help myself. Man, I'd ball in this wall. Me and my boss said, What's the matter, man? What's the matter? I said, Jesus is good. They go, oh, no, here we go again. I said, here's your white meat. Here's your dark meat. There's your wing. That's my leg. And I sat there eating and balling and squalling, mixing that tears and greasy chicken, man. <laughs> they sat there and looked at me. And I said, God, I am making a complete fool of myself. These people think I am a nut like a fruitcake, man. But please do something. He was just, he was just touching me. He said, does it feel good? I said, it feels good, but not in front of my boss, God. Please, I don't mind bawling and squalling, but let me do that at the house in my closet. He said, let them know that I'm alive. You tell them the great proclamation. Boy, I felt about that big for about four hours afterward. I did my work. Everybody was leaving. Mr. Butcher said, come here, Jesse. I said, see that guy? Crying on Shell's time, man. You see that? Just here it comes. This is it, brother. I'm in trouble now. He said, sit down. I want to talk to you. I said, here he is, man. He's going to think I'm crazy, man. What am I going to say? How can I explain that to that man? He looked at me. He says, you know what? I saw you coming in here crying with that grease all over your face and them tears running down your cheek. He said, I thought you was crazy. I said, yeah, I feel pretty nuts. I didn't know what else I was trying to make all kinds of excuses. How, you know what to say? He said, but you must believe. You must believe, otherwise you wouldn't do that. He said, you must really believe in something, otherwise you just wouldn't do that. And he looked at me and I said, yeah, I do believe in it. He said, you know, I used to go to church. I, I don't go no more. He said, but I've missed something. He said, because I went to church like everybody else just to go, you know. He said, now you don't say nothing about this. You understand? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> I ain't saying nothing, man. <laughs> he said, but uh, I appreciate your sincerity. Because there ain't no man going to do something like that unless he believe in something. He said, you must really believe. You must have really found something. That's all he had to say. I said to myself. Lord, I'm going to lay it on his head now. Here goes, brother. And I talked to him for about an hour and a half. And we talked and laughed. I quit Shell Oil Company, went into ministry, and a year and a half later, went to One Shell Square every once in a while. When I go to New Orleans, fly into New Orleans, I'll stop in and see all the guys over there because they were really good friends of mine. Got invited out to eat at his home. Lives in about $250,000, $300,000 home up in Slidell. And every time I get in his house, he says, you know what? Jesus is good, huh, Jesse? I said, yeah, he is. 
I said, Mr. Butcher, I want to tell you something. Jesus is alive. I said, the reason you are where you are with Shell Hall Company, I know you're a smart man, an intelligent man. You've worked hard. I said, but God gave you the intelligence. And the Lord wants to help you and bless you. He said, now, I, I didn't say I was going to go to your church. I said, I didn't ask you. I said, but meet Jesus in your own way. He said, well, is it all right to be Baptist? I said, yes. I had one lady ask me, is it all right to be Catholic? I said, yes. I wish somebody had asked me if it was all right to be Pentecost. <laughs> it don't make no difference what denomination you are. But if you don't know Jesus, you're missing the whole boat. I don't care how many times you go to church. I don't care how many times you go to mass. I don't care how many times. I don't care how, how much good you feel good. You got to have Christ in your life. And when Jesus comes in and speaks the word that he's alive, that he's alive and doing well. Everybody in town will know about it. We witnessed the Jews and Deborah for five years. Jews got saved in his yard outside. At times it was discouraging. Because, see, Kathy found it first. Then I found it. Then Christine found it. And Ricky got a touch of it. I said, God, touch my family. Touch Kathy's family. Then when I found out that the atheist man found it, I like to have a fit. <laughs> then Deborah found it. And then my brother called me from Singapore and he found it. And my younger brother came down here and cried. I believe he found it. What they found? That Jesus is alive. And he can help you if you let him. But you need to meet him. Everybody bow your heads. Thanks for listening to this powerful message by Jesse Duplantis. Remember to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell in order to be up to date with all things Jesse Duplantis Ministries. For more information, visit our website at jdm.org. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.